Hello guys, Robot1 here, and today, as you can see, I have my Ritual Beast deck profile for you guys. Now, I've been testing this deck ever since we got a free Gold Sark. Um, the things that it's done so far, well, not my build, obviously, but Ritual Beast itself is has topped a huge regional, I believe. And I thought, seeing as it's done so well in the past, that I would finally get around to making this video of the deck profile that I have been testing. So, yeah, guys, um, this deck basically, to me, feels like it could be one of the best decks in the format if Ulticon Hawk was at three, or at least two. Like, if this deck, if we had Ulticon Hawk at least two, I could see this deck being played a lot more, seeing as it can be, it's one of the few decks that can actually abuse anti-spell fragrance. Plus, Macrocosmos and Defissure ruin every deck of this format, so... Seeing as I've just said those things, let's get into the actual profile and I'll explain to you reasons I play certain cards. So, first of all, I play Free Apelio purely because it's your bead stick of the deck and it helps you put anything in your graveyard into your banish, or, banish zone to fuel your Conahawk. Simple words, nothing more, less, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, free Ramp Pingu purely, purely to get more monsters in the banish zone and to dump cards you don't need. You never banish your one corner hawk, of course, cause that means you lose your only corner hawk. But yeah, you still use this to say put your ulti Apelio, your ulti Petal Fin, or another Ram Pingu in the graveyard, or if you've got Defigure up in the banish zone, which is pretty much ideal because then you get two monsters in the banish zone to banish with your ulti corner hawk. So yeah, two free ramping go pretty good. Um, free Ulticonok, pretty standard in the deck. You have to play this a free, so because it's literally one of the best cards in the deck, and it enables you to search out your deck. Essentially, it's a gold sark on legs, and it's just a really standard at free. So no matter what, you play this card of free. Um, one pink dolphin or petal fin, as it's really called. Um, you, I play one petal fin purely because it doesn't need to be more than one, and it's not really bad, good if it's up more than one. So, one is enough for this deck, and you don't need more than one. Uh, next we play free win because gold sark went to free you have to play free win now it essentially says you special you make an ulti corner hawk for free so what you want to do it usually is activate this with a win in hand set banish a corner hawk corner hawk's effect banish a pelio what and then you just make a ulti corner hawk and make your plays so yeah you play this at free and you, it's a great card um one zephyr up in a car uh, you don't really have monsters in the graveyard usually, so you only really need to run one. It's just another name as well, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, you only run one of this. Uh, free Elder, standard as well. You have to run the Free Elder, because essentially if first turn it is a free fusion, no matter what the monster is, it's a free fusion. So you play this at free regardless. Well, it's, it's a free free fusion as long as you open with one of your beasts and an and an elder. The ideal opening would be an elder and a conhawk, but you can't always get that sadly. But that is the ideal opening. And then one Lara purely because the same reason as for Pilica, you don't usually have monsters in graveyard, so you only need one of it. Um, next we for spells we got one Rageki because it's Rageki. Um, free go gold sock, you have to play this card at free in the deck, it's literally one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, two MST, because popping back row is always good, like, if you if your corner hole gets striked because you didn't MST it, you you're done. Um, one e Telly because it's at one, you have to play this card as well, it's the same, kind of the same as gold sock, you have to play it at its max, va max value. Uh, one D Fissure, purely because it says, banish monsters. Banish, you always want to play, play cards that banish monsters if your deck can adv advance from it, so because it's always good to do, especially in this format where Blue Eyes, Pendulums, and BA are some of the dominant, some of the dominating decks. And with ABC coming out, this card is going to be stupid against them as well. Um, free Ritual Beast Steeds. Um, you play this up free because it's the one of the best cards in the deck. You have to play it free. Like no, no really deep explanation into that one bottomless staple play it um free 
Ritual Beast Ambush, same as the Steeds, st pretty much you have to place up free regardless, no ifs, no buts. Um, one floodgate trap hole because it's just another. It's kind of like bottomless in a sense. It's one of the better flood. It's one of the best trap holes in the game. So you play this card if you if you have the room. So obviously one of the better floodgates in the game. Well, floodgate trap hole in the game. So yeah, you play this at one or three if you want if you have the space. Uh, one vanity staple trap card right now. You have to play it if you can. So yeah. Vanities is always one of the best cards in the game right now, so you obviously play this as if you can. Um, one macro, same reason as Defissure, it says banish cards. If they're warning it, then you're ju you, they just had the warning. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what, what, the one macro. Uh, free anti-spell fragrance, purely because every deck, well, almost every deck needs spells to play. So activating this really slows down a lot of the decks, especially pendulum decks, because it completely turns them off. And finally, one warning, because it's a warning, why wouldn't you play it? Now, as you guys can probably see, there's no strikes in here. Um, I really couldn't find room for strikes. I suppose if you wanted to put strikes in, you could take out the floodgate and the bottomless. But... Um, I really find that the Floodgate and the Bottomless could be more useful at times because this Floodgate is great against BA and Bottomless is great against Pendulums as well because it says banish all of them. So, nonetheless, it's still a great card. It's still good. If you could put that, if you could put Strikes in, then I would say either take out the two MSTs or the Floodgate and the Bottomless Trap Hole if you really want to. But this is just what I found to be really good. So, yeah. Um, for the extra deck, we play two Ulti Gaia Peleo because it's Ulti Gaia Peleo, you play it at two. Um, basically, so you have one to summon and then one to use as fodder with the Rampingu. Um, free, Ulti Gaia, free Ulti Apeleo because it's a Peleo, you have to play it at three. Uh, one Ulti Corner Hawk, play it at max if you can, standard. Two Ulti Petalfin, don't need to play more than two. Um, now for the XCs, we play the Utopia and Utopia Lightning combo, obviously. You have to play these two, seeing as they say, make myself 5k, get over any monster in the game, and I'm an army of these. Uh, one Castell, standard X rank 4 XCs, one of the best. Uh, Dagusto Emerald allows you to recycle your Conahawk if it dies. Uh, Dweller, one of the best ranks, rank 4s in the game. Um, one Nightmare Shark, because there are times that I found where I have two, where I have a Wen or two Wens or a Zephyr Pillicker on the board. And also go, saying I attack directly for game is pretty fun. And one Grand Pulse for the same reason as this. It's a... Well, it's not direct attack, but being able to pop back row can be very essential at times. So yeah, guys, this is my Ritual Beast deck profile. I find this deck to work very well. I believe it's a great deck. Um, tell me what you guys think of this deck profile in the comment section below. And as always, guys, please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.